How's it going everyone? It's Gavin from Balls to You and this is going to be part two of the breeding videos. Okay, and this part what we're going to do, we're going to uh, cover temperatures. Okay, temperature is uh, very vital for breeding. Um, one thing that I have noticed uh, back in the day we used to talk about having a light cycle. Now, uh, for me, a light cycle it doesn't have any bearing on my breeding okay um, some say it does some say it doesn't for me it has no bearing so I'm not going to talk about light cycles as far as I'm concerned the snakes know when it's night and they know when it's day uh, there's no windows in this room at all um, they sleep during the day and they feed at night um, and I have no problems at all with that so that's the light cycle out of the way so I'm just going to not talk about that because as far as I'm concerned it doesn't affect me or my breeding uh, so okay let's talk about temperatures uh, I get asked this question quite a lot regarding you know when to drop temperatures and should we be dropping temperatures uh, temperatures is a real strange and a bit of an awkward sort of question in a sense of you know you could have multiple answers um, this is again something that I can only give you a guideline on guys okay uh, a lot of stuff comes into play uh, first and foremost the main thing is your room um, I'm fortunate enough to have a separate room where I can control the um, ambient air temperature okay and the humidity in the room so I'm very fortunate in that in that way of uh, you know uh, aspects um, if you've got a spare bedroom where you're breeding your animals you could probably do the same thing where you can control the temperature and the humidity and we're talking ambient air temperatures okay so you can probably control that if you've got a spare room if you haven't got a spare room and you're doing it maybe in the front room or in a, a part of the house where you know doors are being opened or people are passing through um, unfortunately you're not going to be able to control the ambient air temperatures but I'm going to cover that side of things as well anyway um, but I just want to say a few things um, everyone's setup is different okay I can only give you guidelines and again you this is where you guys need to know your animals and know your setup okay that's why it's you know you're sort of fine-tuning your temperatures and everything else around you condition wise to help you have an optimal breeding season so um, first things first let's talk about dropping temperatures or let's talk about I'll tell you what let's talk about when a breeding season starts and finishes okay typically for me at the minute there is no start there is no finish it seems to be all year round at the minute which is fine because I've fine-tuned my setup so that everything is working sort of on this level so it's not too hot and it's not too cold you know I'm sort of bang on but if you're going to start a breeding season which I'd recommend basically so you give your, your animals the chance to build and grow and then you're going to bring them into the breeding season so typically breeding season is around about a five to six month uh, window of opportunity let's say some people say four to five months but I'm going to stretch it out and say five to six months okay so um, around about November or the end of November um, you would start to drop your temperatures and that's where we when we say drop the temperatures we're talking about the hot spot in the tub of the animal okay so you're going to drop the temperature down um, a lot of people are scared of dropping temperatures due to RI and all that sort of stuff well um, I don't have an issue with that at all um, you know you've got to understand that an RI, an RI is an infection it's a respiratory infection okay it's a bit like having a cold um, the, as far as I can see there's certain conditions that trigger them um, as for what I don't really know because I'm not a vet so I can't really give you any indication on that but when we go into a breeding season we do drop temperatures and it tends to be roughly um, okay if we're talking Fahrenheit we tend to drop it like sort of two degrees let's say um, if we're talking Celsius it's normally one degree so 
and we tend to do what's called a nighttime drop. So we tend to drop the temperatures at night and then sort of bring them back up during the day. Now, if you're going to do that, where you're going to have a nighttime drop, you're going to need a stat or a thermostat that you can have a nighttime drop or a daytime uh, rise. So you need something that can control the night and the daytime temperatures. Okay, unless you're going to go in and adjust it yourself every day, it's going to be a bit of a ball ache. Okay, so I would advise grabbing yourself a stat uh, that you can actually set up and walk away from. Okay, so let's talk about the hotspot. The hotspot in general, we tend to think that the hotspot needs to be 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if we're running that through the summer months, let's say, and coming into winter, we want to start dropping our temperatures. Okay, so our hotspot is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius. Okay, um, what I find the certain trigger numbers. Okay, and it, it tends to be a trigger number that sort of triggers the females or the males into knowing that the, the that it's cooling down and that the, the winter's coming and it's breeding time. Um, there's a few myths and this, that, and the other that in Africa they don't potentially have a winter. Um, I'm not going to delve into that too much because it's an open ended conversation that could lead into all sorts of lengthy videos. But all we're going to talk about is dropping temperatures. My, my thoughts are this uh, you need to run your setup and see exactly what it's running at during the summer months. Um, you need to run your your hot spots at 90 degrees or at 32 degrees and then figure out you know what your ambient air temperature across an average in the room uh, one part of my room is running 77 degrees Fahrenheit the other part of the room is running 82 so I can tell you my average is around about let's say 78 79 degrees Fahrenheit okay so <sighs> That's somewhere between 23 and 26 degrees Celsius of an, you know, is an average that the ambient air room temperature is. Okay, so of course, if you think about it logically, and again, you may have to rewind this video to, to get these figures written down and to try and understand them. But if you drop your temperature on your hotspot, on your rack, then obviously your room temperature is going to drop as well which is perfect because you want the ambient air temperature to come down as well. Um, I would drop your hotspot down to 88 degrees Fahrenheit or 31 degrees Celsius. Okay, and it, 88 is the trigger number. Okay, 88 hotspot or 31 degrees Celsius hotspot is your trigger number I find to trigger your animals uh, into a breeding cycle. Now because you've come down even though you've only dropped one degree uh, one degree Celsius or two, de two degrees Fahrenheit it's going to be enough for them to know that oh hang on a minute it's cooling down it's time for breeding. Um, it can slow down the feeding as well, so but I find 88 degrees is a real good trigger number. They tend to breed and feed pretty much perfect. Okay, so you won't have any issues. There's other things that you need to take into consideration when dropping your temperatures. Obviously, heat rises, so the the room temperature up here is going to be a lot more than obviously the ground temperature. Okay, so again. You need to be taking that into consideration. Females that are at the top end of your rack are going to be warmer than the females at the bottom end of the rack. So um, this comes into again a lot of common sense guys. Uh, rotating your animals through your rack is another way of helping your females develop follicles. So what I tend to do is the females that are at the top are particularly potentially just laid let's say because it's warmer so I want to get them back on food so the females at the top are the girls that have 
uh, laid last, let's say. The females at the bottom of the rack tend to be the females that are virtually, you know, sort of going through the cycle of breeding or ovulating or about to lay eggs. So you have a gradual sort of, you know, you, as you're coming down the rack, your females towards the bottom potentially should be laying eggs, okay? So think about it like that. So rather than dropping your temperatures massively, you sort of, all you're going to do is put a gradual decrease on it, but you, then what you're going to do is as your girls are sort of moving through the follicular development, you're going to move them down your rack, okay? So that way you haven't got to do no more adjusting, but as you're moving the females down, guess what? It's cooling every uh, position that you're moving your female down, it's cooling down, okay? And it's getting to a stage where ultimately, they're gonna, the girls at the bottom, like I said, are gonna be dropping eggs for you, okay? And all you're gonna do is just take that female back to the top after she's laid eggs. So, back to dropping temperatures. Uh, normally the beginning or the end of November depends on what you wanna do, guys. And again, this is your breeding season, and this is just a guideline, okay? So, whether it be at the beginning or at the end of November, however you wanna do it, some people do it, you know, at the end of December, it's entirely up to you, okay? But what you need to think about is the country that you're living in. So if you're living in England, obviously if we're gonna have a bad winter, or, or like when I say a bad winter, if we have no winter like this year, 2016, we virtually really didn't have a winter. There wasn't hardly any snow. The temperatures dropped, but it wasn't anything too drastic. Uh, again, the same with the summer. We didn't really have a particularly hot summer. So you need to take stuff like that into consideration as well. Again, if, you're if you've got a room where you're controlling the, the temperatures, then it's not too bad. But it's like anything else. If a room heats up due to sun, then obviously your room temperatures are going to heat up as well, beyond your control. You can have fans and stuff kicking in, but it still will, you know, it's still you're going to be able to control it but you're not going to have full control over the temperatures in that room so you need to think about this logically my advice would be to start your breeding season at the end of November okay um, the reason for that is because you've given your girls a good good going over during November you've checked them all over your, your males you've checked them over if you need any of them, you know, a few extra more feeds, then you can pull that in as well during that month of November. So, the start of November, uh, the end of November, sorry, you're going to start dropping your temperatures, okay? And that's when you're going to start introducing your males in with your females. Now, again, this year I've basically gone all year round because that's what my females wanted, and I'm doing a few experiments regarding temperatures. So again, I said 88 or 31 is the trigger. Okay, so bear that in mind. Um, if you wanna run a breeding season, then you're gonna run it from November through to sort of mm, April time, and then you're gonna start bringing up the temperatures. Now, here's the tricky bit. A lot of people go, oh, in April, say you're breeding from November to April. April you need to start raising your temperatures well that's okay but what if you've got females which are still in the developing stage of a, you know the folliculars uh, their follicular development so their follicles are still developing should you raise your temperature it's a difficult one um, I say no I say if you raise your temperatures, then potentially that girl that was developing her follicles may not go. This is why, when I said about using your rack system as temperature gauges, what you're going to do is, again, if you've got females which are still developing, just move them down a slot, okay? Move them to a cooler part of the rack, because that's what they need. And again, you're going to be looking at your animals, if they're spending all the time on the warm end, then obviously you know they need more warmth. If they're spending more time on the cool end, then again, they need, you know, it needs to be cooler, so move them down. So a lot of this is guidelines, okay? So, let's try and do this. So, from November, the end of November, you're going to drop your temperature, okay, from 
90 degrees Fahrenheit down to 88 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Fahrenheit down to 31 degrees Fahrenheit uh, Celsius sorry so 32 Celsius down to 31 God I'll get my head around it 32 degrees Celsius down to 31 degrees Celsius okay that's your hot spot in your tub okay then you're gonna you're gonna do all your introducing of your males and pairing them up and this that and the other and then obviously what you're then gonna do is you're going to go through the stages with your females which again we'll cover in another video as we go on um, and then what we're gonna do we're gonna start to bring the temperatures back up around about April May time depending on how many females you've got and how they're developing again guys these are your animals you need to decipher whether or not you need to raise them temperatures or keep them as they are okay this year because I've had females being at all different sorts of levels I've kept the temperatures at you know um, 88 degrees Fahrenheit on the hot spot or 31 degrees Celsius on the hot spot and my room temperatures have been between 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees to 26 degrees Celsius okay so um, I work in Fahrenheit guys because that's how I've been taught I know it's American but I, I love it I find it easier to work in Fahrenheit than I do Celsius just work with whatever you want to work with guys but you need to remember come April May time if your females are still growing and developing don't raise your temperatures just roll with it guys okay if you've got females that need warming up just move them up okay it's warmer up here than it is down here you've got no control over that because heat rises so why don't you use it to your advantage and just move your females up okay and those that are still developing just move them down okay that's going to be the the best tip I can give you guys without worrying about your temperatures on your rack and thinking I need to raise the temperatures because my females now needs to go back on food no you don't all you need to do is just move that girl up the rack okay um, so regarding nighttime and daytime drops okay um, the hotspot during the day and night does determine depends on your setup basically it's very difficult to give you guys advice because a lot of this comes down to trial and error and a fine tuning of your own setup okay so it's very difficult for me to give you any sort of real definitive sort of answers and sort of temperatures this is something guys that you need to dial in every day you need to be going in with your, your temperature gun and doing your temperature checks checking where the female is seeing what she's you know where she's lying in the tub um, and again going from there okay um, so if you're gonna do your temperature drop I would advise starting in November because around about now in November certainly in England um, we're, we're having cold spells you know it's starting to get cooler and certainly my room temperature has dropped which is fantastic because um, it, even though I've gone all year round if I was to drop my temperatures November would be the ideal time okay because uh, they're starting to feel that drop in temperature themselves again the air density as well that also drops and changes um, so again it's it's all about knowing your animals and um, understanding the way your setup works it's not as easy as people think just throwing snakes together and hoping for the best it, it, you know there is a bit of science involved when I say it's not easy it does become easy once you know your animals um, but again it's fine-tuning your own collection okay so all I can say to you is uh, temperature wise yes do a temperature drop it hasn't got to be dramatic um, again use the racks as your temperature drop move the female down 
okay through the months as she's developing again you need to have an understanding of your ball python you need to know where your female is at in the development stages okay uh, for you to adjust your temperatures um, I fine-tuned my setup in so basically I can breed and feed all year round uh, and that really does cut down the workload for me and I can enjoy my animals rather than being overwhelmed with 30 odd clutches being hatching all at once and you know 160 babies having to f to be fed and so on and so forth so I want to enjoy my time with the, with the animals and obviously I want to spend time with them feeding them and not rushing them so I'm babbling on a little bit I'm sorry guys but temperatures November time through to April May time and you're gonna run with and you're gonna go with the flow okay you're gonna see how many again it depends on how many animals you've got breeding for you so you may need to extend that breeding period like I said from April May June July and going onwards and upwards um, it just depends on how your collection is and the size of your collection um, that's um, you know a big deal and, and a big part of it as well if you've only got four females and you've started in November doing your breeding then round about March time to April time